So maybe your Atari has gotten to the point that it's starting to get pretty snowy on the screen and whatnot. And it's gonna be it might be a little hard to see the snow in this video since it's a highly compressed YouTube video, but I can assure you the snow is there. And maybe you've gotten to the point that you get tired of wiggling the cord and hope that it gets better or sometimes it might even get worse. Well today I'm going to show you how to take and re take out the uh, RF cord and replace it with the new one on your Atari 2600. Alright so here we have Mr. Atari and as you can see this this RF wire actually has some duct tape on it which isn't <laughs> isn't gonna do you much because once these RF uh, which you know RF is radio frequency once once the uh, wire is split any which way it usually will screw it up and the reason being for that is because there's like kinda like a tin foil usually wrapped around these wrapped around the actual wires and that kinda like shields the uh, radio frequencies so once that shield is broken any of them fucking frequencies can come in and this basically turns into an antenna so to speak we just need standard Phillips screwdriver for this and I am doing this on a bed which I don't suggest you do I suggest you do it on a nice static free table alright so we got a screw down here Unscrewing the Atari. Have you unscrewed your Atari today? Yep. This is the most screw action this bed has seen in quite a while, my friends. It's a very sad, sad thing. But this isn't my primary bed, of course. But still, the other one hasn't seen shit either. <laughs> Not in quite the while. <laughs> Ta-da! Now we got her unscrewed. We're just gonna peel it up, and I'm doing this all with one hand, so I'm sure you could do it better with two. And just flip that over. You can also a better way to do it is actually to turn the console upside down first, and then open it. But you know, I'm har I got hardcore skills, as you can see. So anyhow, we can see that the cord goes up into there. And this particular unit <laughs> is pretty grimy inside. Look at that. Here we'll draw. We'll draw a little anarchy symbol. How about that? Anarchy in the Atari 2600. Gonna pull it on out of there. And flip her over. And you see this one. This Atari board actually has something neat for us on there. It has a piece of paper that says uh, I think it says G it looks like a G I don't know but you know I'm I'm getting rid of that and as you can see this has some grungy grungy shit it's very sticky I don't know what the fuck it is I feel dirty for touching it look at that that is just gnarly alright my dirty ass bathroom sink Oh, I want some good hot water, you know, because this is plastic. It's not, water's not going to fucking hurt it, so. Some people might be going, oh my god, why don't you use Windex or something? Fuck that, why, why would I want some harsh chemicals in my awesome console? It's pretty hot. We're just going to throw this in there. There's our anarchy symbol, we remember that. That's enough water. And, uh, look at that. See that grunge in the bottom of the sink? That came out of the bottom of the Atari here. This is just nasty. What the hell is that stuff, man? Who cares if we're washing it out? We're of course not gonna get the front too wet because we don't wanna we don't wanna wear down any of those cool letterings. 
on the front of it there. Okay, now we got both pieces nice and cleaned up. Hopefully you're smart enough to let them dry first. If not, then you're probably not fit to be performing any of the things in this video. And we're also able to find all four of our little styrofoam things, uh, things for the uh, dip switches there, or switches, or whatever you want to call them. But it, I don't know if you can see this or not. This board's pretty dirty, so we're gonna clean this board up. Look at that. There's some kind of some kind of crap, sticky crap right there on the board. That's not good. And this plastic is. Look at that. That's just yeah. That's pretty nasty. It's the best way to clean up a board. It's just with Q-tips. And Radio Shack does sell some better ones that are better for this purpose. But you know those cost quite a bit more and. Uh, I think that you'll get the same, pretty much the same result with these. As you can see, look at that. I just, I barely even skimmed along the surface, and we're getting a bunch of grunge there. All right, we got our Atari board nice and cleaned up, and as you can see on the back here, look at that. It actually, I don't know if this is gonna Atari Inc. C zero one five five one nine Rev one point three. 1980 copyright 1980 mind you so basically what we did is we just removed 28 years of gross dust and shit and that's what them q-tips look like they're pretty nasty I'm just gonna carefully pull it up there it is as you can see they used a smaller one on this side if you want to have some fun with your Atari you could always uh, hook this up See how that goes on there like that, and then have two video outs, and then actually bring it out like that. Or you can get an adapter like this that only has one of these female inputs, and you could actually map it back over here. See where my finger is? Finger, 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 finger. Okay, and you could. Uh, make it so you have a female end on the back there that way you can use any RF adapt or uh, cord at any time maybe you want to use the same one for your Intellivision your ColecoVision and your Atari 2600 well you could do it like that but I'm not gonna do it like that and as you can see that one it actually kind of fits over the top a little bit more because we're not using the little mini uh, one but the important thing is is that we can see the metal touching the metal it'll definitely ground good and that's what's important see that's all it looks like right there is you got the top of the Atari and you just kind of line the board up with the holes yeah and it just kind of sits up in there you know no screws required okay now we got it all put back together and one thing that I didn't mention was this cord the way Atari has made this is it kinda pinches under that piece of plastic and what I have done is I went ahead and I made me a little duct tape uh, stopper I guess you could call it on the other side of this just so that ensures that it won't get pulled too far that it's gonna hurt my console or that it's just gonna yank the cord out and I'll have to take it back apart so I mean you can see how easy it is to get it out of there I mean it's just that easy right there so yeah it's good to make a little stopper alright so we got the Atari all hooked up now to the TV it's hooked up to a HD TV even though unfortunately the Atari 2600 is not in HD, which would be really cool if it was. Anyhow, we're going to go ahead and turn it on. As you can see, we got a nice clear picture. Not sure how great it'll look through this highly compressed YouTube video along with this crappy camera. But I can assure you, it looks very fucking clear. And with the Sega Genesis SG6 fighter stick, that's going to bring us more of an arcade feel to Centipede, even though Centipede did use a trackball controller originally. That's okay. It's still better than the original 
Atari controller, in my opinion. This is really hard to do with one hand. <laughs> and I'm looking through the camera. <laughs> okay, I can't do this. <laughs> That's it. I hope you found this video somewhat informative.